secret location in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, how how boring is it to be married? How boring is it? How dead has your life become when you get married? I haven't been married in a while. And um, I always believed that the way to keep a marriage fresh was to get married every two years to somebody new. But uh, you have to wonder. I, I never had kids with anybody, and so therefore, I never got to find out how truly drab and depressing being married can be. Now, I hear it from you guys when you call in all the time, and you are reporting from the front. And I know that uh, many of you are just miserable. And you guys are not even the one out of two who've gotten a divorce. You're there. You're in the thick of it. You're like these guys who keep re-upping for Iraq. You know what I'm saying? The bombs are dropping around you. The uh, casualties are piling up. And you're still in the fight. Like our proud men and women of the military, there you are. Dealing with enemy fire every goddamn night. How dull is it? How drab? How depressing is it? Well, listen to this little helpful story. This comes from something called AOL Personals. Yes, AOL Personals. Imagine me. Imagine. How drab and depressing it is. Oh, baby. I'm just thinking about it. Yikes! No, no. I read this from AOL Personals. This is from AOL Personals. And um, it, this is a reminder. AOL Personals says they have the latest in love and dating news. And if what they're saying is true, this is a good reminder of why why being married is so goddamn depressing. Here it is. By the way, I hate these words people are coming up with now. You know, it started with um Benifer and Brangelina, and now it has, has worked its way into like the vocabulary. People this summer, you know, who can't afford to go on a real vacation talking about being on a staycation. Or women who have to pay alimony complaining about having to, having to pay manimony. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's one coming up right now. It's about to hit you over the head. This from AOL Personal says here, gentlemen. If you want to get your lady in the mood for love, by the way, anybody who ever listened to the the top 40 hits of the 60s or 70s or early 80s, you know that love is actually a, it's actually a, another way of saying sex, <laughs> right? When, when Spencer Davis sang, give me some lovin', he wasn't asking that you marry him or 
cradle him in your arms. He, he wanted you to bang him. Give me some loving. The word love is definitely a code word for sex, but they couldn't say, you know, give me some humping on the radio. They, that radio station wouldn't have played that in 1966 or 67. So instead, the song was called Give Me Some Love. Right. So when they talk about getting your lady in the mood for love, we, they're talking about sex. Gentlemen, if you want to get your lady in the mood for love, you need something that's even more powerful than foreplay. You need, wait for it, chore play. That's right. Chore play. Yes, that's the word from Parenting Magazine. That's a very sexy publication, by the way which coined the term after it conducted a survey that revealed 15% of mothers say their idea of foreplay is their husband doing chores. Do the dishes, get lucky. Excuse me while I vomit a second here. Do the chores, get lucky. Are you, are you kidding me, right? <laughs> oh. Imagine being married and then that, this is what you have to do. Like, you want to get laid, you got to take out the garbage. Talk about a buzzkill. Let's say I'm, you know, I'm anxious to get laid. And carrying out the garbage may make her excited. It may get her turned on, but me, I've lost interest. I have lost interest. If I have to mop the floor to get laid, it's not worth the trouble. It's not worth the trouble. You know that old expression on this program, TMW, too much work. It says here, and by the way, they're using this as a word now. It says here, the Atlantic Journal-Constitution reports that chore play can be a lot cheaper than Draining the checking account for chocolate, roses, and expensive dinners out. You know what's even cheaper than that? Not getting married. Jesus. It says here, smart husbands learn to multitask too. Letting their wives have a half hour to themselves where they, are, they do the laundry and get the kids ready for bed. It's the unexpected gift of time that is the most romantic of all. Now that's hot. It says here, I'm quoting. Oh, yeah, that's hot. <laughs> Let me do the laundry and get the kids to bed. You know that tent I've been pitching for the last couple hours? <laughs> it's gone. Jeez. Scott Haltzman, professor of psychiatry and human behavior at Brown University and author of the new book, The Secrets of Happily Married Women, told the journal Constitution, I call it the new romantic gesture. Women are looking for something that gives them the message that they've gone the extra mile, and they've done something that matters to them. Being in the kitchen and emptying the dishwasher is a real clear signal you are fighting for her love. Uh, wasn't that the point of getting married not to have to fight for love anymore? Not to have to fight for sex anymore? How about you guys who all call in here and tell me, you know why I want to get married? Because I want to have sex every night. I'm tired of going out to the clubs. I'm tired of going to the bars. Like, this is what you have looking forward to, to look forward to. This is what's coming, boys. You're going to get married, and then you're going to have to do the dishes in order to get laid. Nowadays, when you get laid, what do you do? You leave a pile of dishes in the sink, you run out, you get laid, you come back, you call the pizza place, right? Imagine when you get married, and now she's cracking the whip. Mm-hmm. AOL Personals continues here. It says, guys, do note that women aren't turned on watching you iron your own shirts, but rather they are turned on by being relieved of their chores and given time to relax. This is what allows her to de-stress and shift gears so she wants to have sex and not just flop into bed and fall asleep instantly. 
course, how many of you boys have tried this? How many of you have tried doing chores for her? And by the time you got to bed, she'd already fallen asleep. And then she said, don't wake me up. I'm tired. Don't touch me. Can't we do this another time? <laughs> Jesus. Says here there is one warning. Men can't engage in chore play as a calculated move to have sex. Well, isn't that what this article is recommending? <laughs> Says here, if that's the case, he'd be better off with roses. Jim Singer, editor of MamaSaid.net. You always have to do what Mama says, right? Told the journal Constitution, they act like there should be a parade down Broadway for making the bed. I hear from moms. Of course you should help. It's your underpants on the floor. But if your intentions are genuine, you can count on a more amorous mate. You know what? If it takes that much mind reading when you're married to get laid, why get married? Why? How many of you guys like this idea of doing chores in order to get laid? How many of you think this is a good recommendation? Doesn't this just tell you one more reason why you shouldn't even get married? Tom Likes. Like 1 800 5800 Tom. You know what? You are the best thing that has happened to women, and they should just listen to you. The Tom Likes Show. Yes. Yes, it is the Tom Likas Show. Funny you should ask. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Uh, they came up with another stupid word. These are the words that get women to watch the news. Brangelina, staycation, manimony, chore play. Because the ladies don't like really reading the news very much or watching it on television. But if you give it a cute little word like that, they might pay attention. You know what's going on here. All right. Uh, how do you feel about this idea that people are married? Now the guy's being told to uh, uh, to use uh, household chores as a way to get their uh, lady into bed. What do you think about that? John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing Okay. No, what time? I've been married for about ten years. Wait a minute. That, you're you're how old? I'm 27, man. I got I got out of the house at 17. I got married immediately. Like a dummy, dummy, dummy. Oh boy. Let me tell you something. Tom. She gives me let's do the chores. The time, you know, you know, she don't do that. You know, she just falls asleep. Don't touch me. Leave me alone. Let's do it some other day. I'm like, uh, uh So you know. And how many kids husband. did she talk you into having? Three. Right, so now now she uses them as the excuse, does she? Hey, I'm fixed, man. There's no excuse now, but I mean, hey. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, she's tired for being with the kids. She's tired for helping the kids. She's right, tired right. of doing homework from the kids. She's tired. Right. So it's all about the kids, right? It's all about the kids. There and, we go. And according to her, you know, I'm wasted. I'm energy. You know, it's a full-time job. And I say, that's a bunch of horse feathers. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of horse feathers. Don't give me any of that. You decided to have kids with me? Do something with me. Come on. But, you know, like I I said, you know, you don't want to do it. Find something on the side, you know. So have you found something on the side? Absolutely. And you don't have to do her housework to get her to have sex with you? Uh-uh. Charlie. That's right. Yeah, you know what I mean? You just, you just hot, too. You know what I mean? I, I hope women who are making these demands, right. I hope they hear what you're saying. You know, I just want to let the ladies out there know, don't ever get your man to do any house chores. You know what it does? It creates him to go find a piece of ass on the side. Do you know how many men I know who've been told that the reason their wife won't have sex with them is because they don't take out the garbage or because they, they don't clean up after themselves? Oh, I've been told that several times, Tom. But you know what I do? I just say, all right, see you. I have to watch them. Well, yeah, the, the best way to avoid that problem is not to let a woman live where you live. Right, right. Then she yeah, can't complain no about that. your uh, your uh, the ability to do chores. But you got you to gotta remember, Tom, when women... They try to manipulate us, you know what I mean? Mexican American, American women are the laziest. They don't want to do nothing, you know? They don't want to put out, they hate to cook. They don't, they hate to do everything in general, you know what I mean? Yes, I'm just, you know, some, there's a rule to the exception. Some are not, not the same, you know? But 
I just want to let the guys know, don't get married. Do not get married. It's a waste of your time. Believe me, it's a waste of time. Well, you know what my uh, friends have told me, uh, who are Mexican, they've told me uh, if you're going to be with a Mexican, be with a real Mexican, not a Mexican-American. My mom told me that, but I was an ignorant dummy. So Because anyway. they tell me Mexican-Americans right. are Americans. They're lazy. They I'm act sorry. like Americans because they are Americans. Absolutely, they're lazy. But anyway, Tom, I just wanted to share my story on the air, and I wonder if you could take me out Kobe style with the background chant of MVP, MVP. I don't think we Kobe have. Up. I don't think we have a background chant, but we have Kobe style for you. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to look at these. Wes on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going, man? Okay, Wes. <laughs> hey, I've been married for nine years. I have an unbelievably beautiful wife. Uh, she's the greatest woman in the world. Um, she she never asked me to do the laundry. She never asked me to watch the kids or anything like that. But what happens is that my wife has become this, uh, I call her the mom, um, and she's become this just utterly non-sexual being since we've had children. And it's, it's like I, I try to do things like the laundry, and I try to do things to take the pressure off, not because she demands it, but just because I want my wife, but, you know, I want that sexual being where I don't have a dog staring me down and, and the kids banging on the door and, you know, they, that stuff where you go to Vegas, you know, and, and, and you just, just rock it out in the hotel all weekend long, you know. Let me uh, ask you a question. Um, if you divorced your wife today or if you died and your wife was forced to meet other men, do you think she'd refuse to have sex with them? No. no. And you know what? You know what the funny thing is, Tom, is it's not that she's refusing to have sex. I probably have sex with her maybe two times a week. What it comes down to is because of the dog and because of the kids and because all the, you know, housework and she's just worn out and just used by the end of the day that I have a hard time. I'm 30 years old. But I'm telling you, if you, if you left her. And she had to fend for herself. Uh, her hair would grow longer. <laughs> She'd find her way back to the gym, as beautiful as she may be now. She probably was better looking when you met her. And uh, she would uh, find a place to drop the kids so she could bang away in a hotel room for a weekend with sucker number two. Wow, well, I, I wouldn't call myself a sucker, Tom. But, man, I'll tell you what, man. I understand why they created Viagra. Because it's just it's just one of those things, man, where, you know, no matter what you do, it's 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 just, you know, there's there's just Well, we've talked about why they created Viagra. <laughs> you know about that, right? Uh no, I have you ever heard that. You know the people who endorse Viagra over the years? Uh, Bob Dole? <laughs> ever seen Mrs. Dole? No, <laughs> no. wonder he needs a pill. Oh, about, God, Tom, I wish I, uh, you know what? I'm going to be one of the people that actually send you the picture. I'll send you a picture of my wife, and, and she's, she's, I, I, I came out here from Dallas, and she's, she's in, she's an LA 10. She's probably a nine or an eight now, you know, but when I, when I met her, she was, she was up there, but she's still up there, and every once in a while, I get that glimpse, man. And so sometimes I'll go and, and, and I'll do the laundry. I'll take the kids with me. But you realize you know, if you didn't get married, you would not have to do that in order to get late. I, I, I realize that now, Tom. And sometimes, man, I think about it and I think, God, you know, uh, with the money that I make now and, the, and it, I would just, it would, it would be a sweet life. And there's a trade off. And I know how you feel about marriage. There's a trade off, but man, uh, it's just sometimes it's it's just mind numbing. I mean, you want to take a ball peen hammer and just start smacking yourself in the head because it's it's like, you know, she wants you to get going and and it's like you know I can't have sex with my mom, you know, and that's pretty much kind of what you become. And she doesn't have short hair and any of that stuff. It's just it's this incessant. You know, you get home from work and it's oh I had a horrible day and just everything is doom and gloom and. And it's just I don't know, man. Some days, some days I'm 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 on top of the world because she's my best friend. But then some days it's just, 
It's just I, I just want to jump off a building. That's why I say I tell the guys, why do it? Well, I will tell the guys that that if if you find somebody that you can spend the rest of your life with and you don't mind at some point her sexuality just completely going out the window for an extended period of time, then by all means, go for it. But if you're planning, like you said at the beginning, if you're planning to just bang away, man, marriage is not the way to go. Well, I don't know a lot of guys whose sex drive goes away. I know a lot of guys whose sex drive goes away when they start looking at a 180-pounder. Oh, no, she's, she's not any close to that, but I can see why you're sick. Girl. <laughs> Go away with her. Oh, boy, yeah. there's a lot of that out there. Hey, Wes, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jessica. I'm your worst nightmare. I know you hate me and you hate my kind. I don't know what kind you are. I'm the quintessential bitch wife, ex or well, soon-to-be ex-wife. Well, it, it certainly I have a problem with you girls. Yes, I do. I know you do. And let me tell you that this, my story may help your, your uh, listeners because there is no such thing as uh, exception. All those bitches are the same. Or all the same. I got married about 10 years ago and almost, well, we were together for 12, but married for 10 legally. And, yeah, I put out whenever I wanted. And if I didn't feel like it, well, I guess what? I didn't. Now, did you know you would be that uh, way before you got married? No, I wasn't that way. I ruled him in good. I would give him all the sex he wanted. I was good at it, too. And, you know, yeah, I ruled him so in So your good. plan in the beginning was to reel him in with lots of hot sex. Reel him in, Tom. I reeled him in. The self it. He proposed. We got married and had, a, had two children. And... And, yeah, and did you, you know, have a plan, like, when you would cut him off? Like, was it after the second kid or after you got married? When When was your planned cutoff? Well, you know, Tom, you're right. It's after the children come along. Women change. It's something that happens hormonally, and it's nothing that comes. It, it happens. when Once the children get here, everything's gone. And, yeah, I would give him some whenever I felt like it, not when he felt like it. So, yeah, he ended up cheating on me. No surprise there, right? And you got upset at him for cheating on you. Oh, of course I did, and I'm taking him to the cleaners right now. And you know what? The judge does not care what he has to say. They're fighting with me a thousand percent, and I'm taking him for everything he's got. Because you were married for ten years? We were married for ten years, and like you said, I'm getting vagina vaginamony, is that what you call it? Vaginamony. Yeah, that's what I'm getting, and I'm getting him good. And he's going to pay you forever? Is that the... Gonna, well, depends, because, yeah, I was a stay-at-home mom, so yeah, I'm unemployed. Um... So, yeah, as long as I don't get remarried. Wait, which you I won't. I, well, of course not. Are you kidding me? Not if you have a boyfriend, he'll move into what used to be uh, your husband's house. That's right. He'll move into whoever I'm with. I'll move in wherever I want in my house because you know what? I have the kids. So his dumb ass has to go to the street or wherever he has to go. I really don't care. Now, was this always your plan or did you just become bitter and cynical as time went on? Mm, yeah, I became bitter and I'm a bitch. You you yep. became bitter and, and a bitch as time went on? You know why, Tom? Because why? you're right. Marriage is a piece of crap. I should have never done it. And the sad thing is that I came to to the realization that I, I'm stuck with the kids. So that's what made me bitter. Right. But, of course, you got married at 17. Was that a smart thing to do? And no, that was the stupidest thing I could have ever done. But... I should have never got married. I mean, if I could redo my life again, I would. And that's, I guess that's what makes me bitter, the fact that I know that he can redo his life whenever he wants with whomever he wants. And I can't. And no matter how much he has to pay you, ultimately, he'll oh, be he happier has, than you. He has to pay me. But he will be happier than me. You're right. And I guess that's what drives women to do what I'm doing, which is taking him to the cleaners. Of course, I'm it's not his him. fault that it became that way. It's not his fault, but I don't care. He's going to pay one way or another. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, see, again, I hope the men are listening because this is why I tell them not to get married to women like you. Yeah, you're right. I, you know, Tom, I agree with everything you're saying. I know they're bitches. And we're bitter and we become angry and we will harm them. And the sad part about it is, Tom, that I know I do feel bad for him sometimes because the judge just comes down on his butt every time we go to court. He has no, he's no match for me. I put on my little, I put on the waterworks. And believe me, the judge just falls all, all over. People. And let me guess, he's paying for your attorney, too. He's paying for... Yeah, how did you know? I've been divorced myself, too. He's paying for my...
my attorney. He's paying. He's still paying the mortgage. He's still covering all the bills in my house because you know I'm a stay home mom. So naturally, he has to do it. So yeah, he's miserable for now. I know one day he'll be happy. I don't know, but as long as I could prevent him from being happy, oh, you best believe I'm gonna do it. And have you been getting more ass than a toilet seat? Have I what? Have you been getting laid? Oh, of course. I'm, you know what? I'm sleeping. I slept with his boss. That's something he doesn't know. And I'm going to let him know this. Watch. Once we get everything straightened out and I have everything I want, I'm going to tell him what I did. Because I was cheating on his ass, too. Really? Yes. You know so what? you were Let me understand this. You were refusing to have sex with him because you were tired from having the kids, because you had all these changes, but you were able to have sex with his boss. Not just his boss. You know, other people. But let me tell you why, Tom. Because it's what you've said all along. Bo marriage is boring. I got tired of him. It was nothing personal. I just was, just was tired of him. But you were the one who wanted to get married. Yeah. Both of us, actually, you know, because you're young and dumb and you want to go for it. And, you know, I'm just, look, Tom, I'm calling because I want dumbass guys out there to see that what you say is true. There is no exceptions. We're, it, this is the way it rolls when you get married. This is the way it is. I didn't find him attractive. I didn't get horny with him, but you better bet I got horny with other people. Wow, wow, wow. I, guys, I hope you're paying attention. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I took your advice staunchly, and I've been dating lots of different girls and banging all kinds of chicks. If you only knew, more ass than a toilet seat. Love that. Oh, jeez. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likas. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We are talking about uh, this new concept now being discussed in women's magazines, newspapers like the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, even on AOL. Chore play. Yes, get wifey to have sex with you. Turn her on by doing the dishes. Mm. Just kill me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Heather on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. I just wanted to say that that article is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Really? Yes. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have three children at home. My husband works full-time, and I still have the energy every night to make sure that he's happy. Whether he wants it or not, that's his decision, but he knows that I'm happy. You'll give it to him no matter what? No matter what. I make sure that I'm presentable when he walks in the door so that I'm not some slotty lady, you know, in his sweatpants and T-shirt saying, Oh, I'm so sleepy. So stupid. Come on now. We need to show these guys a little bit of something or th th exactly what they do. They go and cheat. By the way, these are the women who are, they're all shocked when their husbands cheat on them. They can go find someone out there that's going to give it to him. That's right. And I've been married for almost nine years. So it's not like I just got married or Wait anything Wait you're like 25. That. You got married at 16? Yes, I did. 16? 16. Was that a good idea? You know what? It worked for me. I, I'm still married to him. He's happy. I'm happy. We have three great kids. And, you know, it, it's not for everybody. I'm not Did you graduate lie. high school? Um, I finished high school. I mean, at the time you were supposed to finish it. No, I finished early. Uh, he was going to join the military. I see. And my family's crazy, so he wanted to make sure that I was taken care of before he left. And marrying you was a way to do that? Yeah, it made sure that I was taken care of. See, wow, we thought right, you did I, what you thought you had to do. Exactly, and and it worked for us. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not going to lie and say that everybody should go out and get married at 16 because, you know, it just it worked for me and him, and we're still happy. He's my best friend, and you know, we're both where we need to be. All right, well, Heather, thank you for that. Wow. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yeah, I love your show. Thank Long you. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Cool. I'm so glad I finally got through. i got to say, this chore play, and don't worry, I'm not going to cuss on your show. I respect you too much for that, but what a crock. <laughs> 
you know, first of all, in my, in my opinion, about the only thing I do, I mean, I've got a great girlfriend. She's she's one of the, you'd call her one of the exceptions. I cook for her because I like to cook. It's something that I enjoy doing. But outside of that, I think most of these guys, you know, the, oh, yeah, I'm going to take out the trash. I'm going to mop the floor. I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to iron your underwear, whatever, you know, and the, and the women are probably going, you know, you think back to old days when guys never did that stuff, they're going, what a wimp. I don't even respect this guy anymore. Why? Why? I want to sleep with a man. I want to sleep with a guy who's going to stand up to me, not a guy who's going to chow down to me every minute. Absolutely right. I, I really do believe that's true. I think uh, once you agree to do this stuff, you, you once you allow her to crack the whip... Yes, and it's going to be expected from that day forward. That's right. You're setting you're the bar. To do it. You are yeah, setting the bar. Exactly. You're you're setting the you're setting the standard, and she's going to go. Okay, well, gee, maybe I'll give him a little tease, but first, guess what? I'm going to get him to do for me. Right. Like I always say, you know, if you didn't get married, you never had to do a household chore to get somebody to have sex with you. Never. Yeah, and, and, well, I do have to admit, to you, and I know you're probably going to hate me for this, but we actually are engaged. We are actually contemplating still living apart. Why get married, even? Um, you know, it, it, I can't. <laughs> I know I'm in love, but but, but, but you, you can be in love without you're in love now. You don't need to get married to be in love. You know, it's I. I don't know. I guess I I can't really explain it. It's just the way I feel for her. She's she she honestly actually she got to talk to you once before. She's the one that got me listening to you in the first place. Right. And she's talked to you on the phone. Actually, uh, she called about some sh about champagne because we're, we're both um, wine enthusiasts, like yourself. Right. And uh, we, one of the things that we're looking at is we both make very good money, both of us well over six figures, and we're looking at the what kind of life that we can have together from a financial. But you can have a life. To, you put it this way: you can have a life. You can buy a house and own each own fifty percent of it without getting married. Really, I didn't know that. Of course, you can, any two people could do that. Interesting. I, I, I go off. We don't you know don't have to be doing. married to do that. Yeah, well, I mean, we each have our own homes right now that we own. But if you wanted to buy one really great house. Which we, we actually, we, we want your place, and you, your new 20-acre uh, place. Oh, uh, but you do. <laughs> but and one day we may have it. Put it this way. Uh, the, the way it's going now with banks and uh, mortgage companies, there'll be plenty more where that came from. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, we're both bankers. All right, so you know. Oh, yes, we know. There's blood in the streets. Now's the time. But I, I, but you don't have to get married to do that. Yeah, probably not. I don't know. I, I, um, I don't know. It just it, To me, it's, it's, it's almost symbolic because of the way I feel for her, I think. Yeah, but it's, it's the most expensive symbol you'll ever sign on for. Uh, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But, um, you know, on... on Actually, you know, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I don't think she's the type that would take me because she's got her own money. Actually, her net worth is more well, than mine. Everyone says that until they get screwed. Yeah, that's because they're marrying losers, though. She, yeah, yeah, I know. You're the exception to the rule, like all the other exceptions who call in here. <laughs> well, I, what I, kind I, of I, rule I, is that if everyone's an exception to it? I don't know. I, 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 I tend to believe that, that I did find one of the very few exceptions out well, there. Well, and, and, and I tend to believe that Santa Claus will be coming down my chimney December 24th. I tend to believe that. <laughs> I'll give you that. I tend to believe the Lakers will win it in seven. That I really do want to believe. <laughs> yes. And you want to believe you're going to stay married and not get screwed, too. You know, I, I think, I I don't know. I just know. We, we've been together now for six years, um, and the way things have gone, I, I feel really comfortable with it, actually. Everybody does, but you've never lived with a signed contract. You've never seen how it changes people's motivation to do things. Let me give you an example that has nothing to do with marriage. Are you a sports fan? Uh, actually, typically not, no. <laughs> not any sport at all? Uh, yeah, pro rodeo. I mean a team sport. Ever basketball, baseball, football. Are you, are you an American? Yes, I am. And you have no interest in team. No wonder you want to get married. And, and, you, and you have no interest in team. Well, believe me, once you get married, you're going to be down there at the sports bar with the rest of us. 
Oh, I, no, I, I, have been married be- I have been married before and, um, and went, went through a divorce, but it was actually very amicable. Oh, I, I that, well, that's, totally you're a very lucky guy. I okay, that's my, great. I kept my four. So you just said, that's wonderful, but again, <laughs> you got very lucky, son. Okay. Now, now let me just point this out to you. Uh, all right, you're not a sports fan, but most sports fans out there will relate to what I'm about to say. Nowadays, they have these huge contracts they give guys, you know, $200 million for so many years or whatever. Right. And, and uh, now, some of them do perform. Like Alex Rodriguez is the most criticized individual, gets the most money, and he has certainly put up consistent numbers. Then you have other players. The Dodgers have signed a number of these. You know, the kind you pay lots of money to, and suddenly they stop showing up at the ballpark. Or suddenly they're getting hurt all the time. Or suddenly they're batting two twenty seven, and they have these inexplicable slumps. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. These players played great until you signed them to a contract. Suddenly, people who looked great before now look terrible. You know what I'm talking about? I, I hear exactly what you're saying. You have no idea how badly someone can play until you sign them to a big contract. That's a good point. Right? So as good as somebody looks, you know, Nomar Garcia Parra looked like great, great ball player at one time. Now the guy can't play three weeks without getting hurt. That's my ex-wife. Well, it could be your future wife, too. Well, yeah, you, you might you might have a point. She's I, I playing guess. great now. Now that she's in the uh, you know she's uh, she's uh, the, she's in her free agency. But yeah. you you have no idea how she'll perform once she signs the contract. Yeah, you, no, you 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 got a good point. I, I will say this, Tom. Um, like I said, she's the one that turned me on to you. She totally listens to you, believes everything you say. You know, the ninety nine. And as a matter of fact, you are number one on the top five people we'd love to have to dinner. Look at that. For both of us. That's that's until you need a divorce lawyer. Then I'll move down to number two. <laughs> Touche. I, 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 an example of a, a real ball player that I'm thinking about, there was a baseball player who played for the Dodgers named Adrian Beltre. Uh-huh. Dodgers signed him when he was like 15 years old. They didn't know he was 15, but they signed him when he was like 15 years old. And finally, when he was about 26, 27 years old, in the final year of his contract with the Dodgers, he finally had the big year everybody was expecting. Over 30 home runs, over 100 runs batted in. He batted like 330 that year. He never had a year like that. Wow. And as a result of playing so well, the Dodgers had... You only had one good year. We're not paying you $15 million a year. Forget it. But the Seattle Mariners were all too happy to pay him $15 million a year for I don't know how many years. Oh, wow. So the Mariners signed him. And how do you think Adrian Beltre did when he went to play in Seattle, now that he had the big contract? I think I know where you're going. Stinks. But when they were up there in Seattle watching him hit 37 home runs in L.A., he sure looked good to them then. Wow. Now he's all theirs. <laughs> and they're losing out. They, uh, the uh, Mariners just fired their general manager, Bill Bavese, as a matter of fact. That's right. Yeah, well, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is you don't want to marry Adrian Beltre. No, and, well, I'm a guy anyway, so I wouldn't, but I see your point. Well, maybe your name's Adrian. I don't know. But the point is you do not want to marry, like, somebody who's in there, you're a free agency, and then find out later once they're signed to a contract. That they don't play as well as they did when they were angling for a contract. Hmm. That's definitely something to think about. It is. I know you won't, but uh, it is. <laughs> and then you're right. My, my mind is made up. Yeah, I know. But I still love you, man. All right, John. Thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or visit our MySpace. It's MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Hear the show streaming live at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.